quick, I just wanted to say this, that this video you're about to watch is absolutely trash. I mean, the quality, the sound, I'm just like, oh my God. But it was such a great recipe and I don't want to not post it. So I'm going to give you this quick precursor that um, this video needs a lot of work that I didn't realize that I needed until after the fact. So go ahead and watch this video. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, just let me know. And thank you for watching. Hello, my name is Tony Marvels and welcome to Recreated 2.0. So the quarantine has us quarantined and I am exhausted. I need a vacation. I need a trip. I need somewhere to go. I need somewhere to be. I want to take a vacation. Okay. I'm not comfortable going anywhere right now. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a vacation in my mouth. Okay, that ain't come up. That ain't come up. Um, I mean to say that I want to take an island vacation through my food. <laughs> That's what I want to say. I'm going to show you guys how to make a whole roasted red snapper with a pineapple mango salsa and a coconut couscous. It's going to knock your socks off. Trust me, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have an island vibe. I'm going to be changing this to some island. I have here some red snapper that I got from the fish market. Um, the, the other day, I like to get my fish fresh. Then I had them clean and butterfly. And yet, I have to keep the head on it. Cause I, it's me. So I have these, I went ahead and cleaned them off again, make sure they were clean. And I dried them out with paper towel, make sure they were nice and so this is beautiful looking and fresh. For my red snappers, I'm gonna make a paste almost. I'm gonna make a paste of sorts. So I'm gonna start off with some cayenne red pepper for a red snapper. About two tablespoons worth. We're not gonna be scared to season it because fresh fish, you really gotta have that taste of fresh, fresh fish. We need some black pepper. I'm gonna do some sea salt. We're gonna add a little bit more salt onto the actual fish too. We're gonna add some onion powder. We're gonna add some olive spice. And that's gonna give it that iron feel. Just a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit. I'm gonna add in some ginger paste. I'm also gonna add in some minced garlic. If you have fresh garlic, that's fine as well. I'm gonna use minced garlic. I'm gonna also use some liquid smoke to kind of give it that smoky taste without actually having to grill. Just a little bit, this is that. I'm also going to add in some tomato paste, some paprika. I'm going to add in some oil just so it can mix in well. I can mix it into a nice taste. And what I love about good flavors like this, and what I love, really, my kind of cooking is very eclectic. So you're not going to really find these kind of recipes in a restaurant because I love food. I like to study the taste. I like to study different flavors on profiles and kind of mess them together and make it how I want. So we're gonna grab our fish here. Now I have the nightly butterfly. When you go to your fish market, they can butterfly your fish for you. I chose to have them butterfly it, be thin it, and make it look just like this. So you go into your fish market, they will make it look just like this. Now, if we're gonna mix some scorch marks, these marks will help make sure that the fish does not curl up, and also to make sure our flavor goes straight down to the bone. We're gonna just cut the skin until it's straight to the bone. Okay, just three or four, depending on how you feel. Make sure you have a sharp knife. Make sure you have a knife with a smooth edge as well. And we're gonna do that on both sides. We're going to take our paste. We're now going to add a little dollop there. Dollop there. rub this into our fish right into those holes that we just created these nice slit we're just going to coat our fish really really well okay on both sides it'd be easier to rub on the inside because if it's wet it's not going to stick but if it's dry enough the flavors are just so wet on up in there and i know some people are like kind of weirded out when it comes to fish with heads on it they're like Ew, I can't do no fish with no head on it. So, 
You don't eat the head. Uh -oh, just don't eat the head. And I'm gonna take a lemon. I'm gonna cut a couple of the slices. And we're just gonna open our fishes up again. I'm going to layer some lemon slices inside, just like that. I'm also gonna put in a few fresh sprigs of thyme. On the inside of my fish. Close them up. I'm gonna bring my bacon sheet over here. I have some zucchini that I've already cut up. So I'm gonna do a little bit of vegetables, add a little bit of oil on top of that. Also add some salt. Give that a pop. I have my oven at 400 degrees. I'm gonna add in a little bit more salt just on the top just to give it a nice crispy skin. Add in some more pepper. I can hear y'all talking now. Man. You can't convince me to eat no fish with no head on it. Just cut the head off. Okay, it's the same, the same fish. I'm also gonna add on a little bit of dry thyme. Take it in the oven. I'm gonna have it at 400 degrees. We're gonna cook this for about 25 to 30 minutes, okay? Work on our coconut couscous, okay? If I have a nice little medium sized stock pot, I'm gonna add in one can of coconut milk, and that's about a cup and a half of worth of coconut milk right there. Add a little salt to it, and then a teaspoon of sugar, not much, just a teaspoon of sugar. So I'm also gonna add in some curry powder, just a little bit, not much, because I don't want it to be a curry, I just want a little bit of the curry taste. And I'm also gonna add in some brown turmeric as well. Just for the color and also that distinct flavor. We're gonna give this a stir. We're gonna turn our heat on like a medium high. And wait for it to come to a simmer. Now that our coconut milk has come to a nice simmer, I'm gonna add in one and a half a cup of couscous. So when making couscous, you wanna have the one-to-one -one ratio. How much liquid you use, it's the same amount of couscous that you want to use. Okay? And it doesn't take long to cook. I'm going to give it a nice little stir. It kind of basically simmers for about five to seven minutes or so to soak up all the moisture with the rest of the on. And this is the kind of couscous that I use. mango sauce. I have some pineapple, I have some red onions, I have some mango, and I also have some jalapeno peppers. I took some of the seeds out, but I left some of it because I wanted it to be like a spicy pineapple mango sauce. Okay, so we're gonna add in our fruit and our veggies. We're really playing with flavor here. Like I'm taking cooking to a whole nother level. Cause I'm not like the pasta guy. I'm never, I'm never like the pasta guy. Um, with a pinch of salt, just to bring it. Me too, to be honest, salt actually bring out the um, sweetness. This is the item, so we're gonna add that salt in there. We're gonna cook this for just like um, five to six minutes or so, not much. Just to kind of get it like nice and soft. I'm gonna also add in some paprika. I'm learning to taste my food as I'm cooking it to make sure that it's good when it ends. Mm. Man. Whoa. This is good. I'm taking off the meat. And all we're waiting for now is our fish.
get all of it. I want to do. Got some of the salsa. Got some of the couscous on here. Got some of the fish. Give this man a try. He's not a bad ass. 